Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Vos, joined by Derek Young as we are set and ready to go to talk about the newest addition to the K-State coaching staff. Obviously, there's been a lot of questions and everybody trying to figure out, okay, what's the move going to be now that Colin Klein is gone? We got to see Connor Riley's dress rehearsal or you know audition for the offensive coordinator role in the Pop-Tarts Bowl. Didn't go terrible. Maybe didn't go as great as some people would have wanted to just overwhelmingly give the job to him. And seems like the good news for all parties involved in what they want to see K-State do, there's going to be kind of a, a split decision here where Connor Riley is going to be the offensive coordinator in some fashion, but he's not going to be out there on an island. There will be another veteran voice in the offensive decision-making category. It appears that it's going to be Matt Wells, a guy that Chris Kleiman multiple times during his career at K-State has referenced and spoken very highly of and talked about their friendship. Matt Wells looks like the guy going to be uh, joining the staff now. Offensive coordinator position was open for K-State. Co-OC seems to be the target, and then obviously they needed a quarterback's coach. All stuff that Matt Wells has done in his career at either Utah State or stops before that, and then obviously he had a pretty long stretch as a head coach in college football as he was the head coach for, I think, six seasons at Utah State and parts of three seasons at Texas Tech before they let him go, and he spent the last two years as an analyst at OU. So, D.Y., what does this addition mean, and how did it all come together for the Cats and Matt Wells? Well, I, I think it means that you are bringing in someone with probably a little bit of a different approach, or, or it could bring maybe something different to the offense that – wasn't there in the last few years. Not to say it was bad, just something maybe a little different, uh, but a predictable hire. Not to say it's a bad hire. I think it's actually a pretty solid hire. Uh, but if you look at his tenure at Utah State and Texas Tech, there's not a, a lot of average years there. There's a, there's a, it just seems like he was either really, really good, uh, like a top 15, top 20 outfit. Or there's a few in the 90s as well. So you could probably, depending on what your you know, initial instincts or were already or what you had in mind, you could probably view this in whatever kind of lens that you want. I'm sure there's some that might be disappointed in it because he's not necessarily a coordinator with you know littered with top 20 offenses, but he does have a few, and when and those few are actually pretty elite. Uh, a couple being with Jordan Love at the helm, the current Green Bay Packers quarterback, where he, you could say it was produced and developed solely by Matt Wells at Utah State. So he, he probably deserves some credit for that. And when I say predictable hire, it's because, uh, like you said, the two had been connected for a while. They were they spoke glowingly of each other. Um, they acknowledged the friendship, the close friendship between one another. And I believe at one point, while Wells was the head coach at Utah State, he attempted to hire sitting North Dakota State head coach Chris Kleiman to be his defensive coordinator. Now, uh, that didn't necessarily come to fruition, but, but it does show the connection between the two. Uh, you know, Drew mentioned this in, in our group chat, and I felt the same way. I, I initially thought Matt Wells would be the hire when Colin Klein was the hire. Uh, a couple years ago when they had to replace Courtney Messingham. So it still happens just a few years later. I I wouldn't call it a home run hire, um, but I also wouldn't call it a disaster hire either, like some might want to frame it as. I don't know. I think uh, you, you, you dot a lot of I's across a lot of T's with this hire, and I would call it a solid one. Um, and the fact that it seems to be supported by Avery Johnson is a big win in itself. And – you do have to wonder, that, like, is it more of a fit for Matt Wells and maybe he could even become a better coach than he was prior? Because, you know, you put him next to a guy that he really believes in, and Chris Kleiman, you know, he's back as an offensive coordinator in a, in a developmental place. And, you know, it could be – he was never a fit at Texas Tech, right? Like, he's not a Texas guy. Uh, they wanted him out of there as soon as they hired him, essentially. It didn't yeah. matter what the results were. He actually had the, the program that he had to clean up the mess left by Cliff Kingsbury. And he actually had them ascending at the point he was fired, which is mm -hmm. interesting just because they wanted to hire a Texas guy. And, and I'm rambling here, 
But I guess it comes back to there, there's a chance that just because it's a better fit and maybe it's a great marriage between him and Connor Riley when you got a run game guy and a pass game guy that it fits and works a lot better than it has even in the past. All right, well, you mentioned the dynamic now between Connor Riley and Matt Wells. I mean, what what is the expectation for how – play calling duty will go or, or who should have the opportunity to kind of be the lead voice there? Because yes, there is the co tag to it, but to some extent, somebody has got to be the leader in there. Yep. And it seems like it kind of an odd spot now because you have a guy in Matt Wells that obviously is very accomplished and experienced in his own right. And then a guy like Connor Riley, who probably is sitting there kind of thinking to himself, Hey, I I've earned this opportunity now. And then I proved myself in the bowl game a little bit. Uh, what what do you expect here? Because I don't know that we're going to have any of these definite answers from the K State side until probably August. But <laughs> from how you see it, what what should be the thing that plays out here between Riley and Wells? I, I'm a little speechless in regards to that. I don't know how you feel. I really don't know because I could literally like both things would make sense. It would make sense that the accomplished former Power Five head coach be the primary play caller even if they have code titles. But I also think, do you strip that away from Connor Riley? As soon as what I think, aside from one quarter, was a really good offensive coordinator against NC State in the Pop-Tarts Bowl, um, a little predictable on first down. Um, that probably got them behind the sticks more than they wanted to be. But aside from that, I thought it was a solid performance from him. So I, I, may, I don't know if you want to look at it as a glass half full thing, and maybe you can give your take on this as, that I don't know if you can you can go wrong here. Yeah, I don't I don't know that you can go wrong in making this decision. I would honestly probably lean towards letting Connor Riley be that number one voice in there because he's the guy that has been in the program the longest. Obviously, you know, I, I think Avery Johnson said positive things about him afterwards. It does seem like, hey, this is this is your time to have the opportunity. And I would be for leaving the guy in place that will most continue to try and base everything off of what we saw go on during the Connor or the Colin Klein lineage of, of those two years. And I think obviously Connor Riley gives you that opportunity. Matt Wells, like you might be looking at more of like, if he took his, all of his hands and put it all over this thing, it's like, we're really going to remold and retool all this. I think he's a good voice to have a good man to have giving you opinion, but I, this feels like it's Connor Riley's time and chance and opportunity and after what went down in Orlando, um, I'm totally okay with Connor Riley being the lead voice. And then, you know, obviously you don't have to be willy-nilly about it. And, you know, he has one bad half or something. You're like, all right, you're out. Matt, Matt's up in the number one chair now. But you at least have somebody that's capable if you're struggling or you need to retool some things down the line that you can turn to and you can make that switch and feel like you have the capable bodies on staff and on hand currently as opposed to having to make more sweeping changes. Two things. I, I agree with what well, one. I agree. I would like this to still look a bit like the Colin Klein offense of the last two years. And that would support perhaps a Connor Riley uh, primary play calling situation Two, And this would go back to Wells is does he take this job without knowing he's the primary play caller? I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I think I think probably given the fact that like he's just been an analyst at OU the last couple of years, so you actually get you know a, a legit title to you again. And I mean, I understand that Jeff Levy just left and got a job on his own accord, but like that's probably a lot more to do with him than being attached to Brent Venables and everything else. Uh, I, I think being able to get out of what I mean we view as a tedious situation in Norman that could go one way or the other. He goes to a place that's stable under Chris Kleiman. Obviously, Chris Kleiman is respected now, and he's going to get his his own label. He is going to be the quarterback's coach again. He's going to be a co-offensive coordinator. And I think regardless of how it plays out and, and who's doing most of the brunt work of calling plays, I think that he is going to be able to get something out of this. And obviously, the relationship with Chris Kleiman, I think that can also lead to you know, you don't have to be guaranteed something so special to make this happen. But uh, at the end of the day, Chris Kleiman, with this hire and so many of the other things that he's done when building a staff, he has proven that, number one, he knows how to manage them, and number two, he knows how to get the right kind of guys in. And 
I think that showcases that whatever decision or split that he's come down to with how this is going to go with the offense, they're going to be able to make it work. And I would imagine that he also knows he doesn't want Matt Wells coming in here and trying to reinvent the wheel for him. Like they feel like they have a pretty good thing going already. Just kind of continue it on, bring in somebody though, that is capable, has experience with guys. And I mean, like you said, you know, it's, it's nothing to kind of forget about, but like this is the guy that brought and coached most of Jordan Love's time at Utah State. And, you know, you can say what you want about him in the NFL, which actually I've been, you know, fairly impressed by him this year. Um, I'm sure, you know, you've had your ups and downs with him with the Packers, but like he got Jordan Love to the NFL. And uh, I think that's something that you can, you can plead the case to, to Avery Johnson and other guys that to keep sticking around. And obviously they have. So, I think this is a I think this is a strong hire and this is like you said not a home run but you knew that you weren't going to make some massive mistake with bringing in Matt Wells. So I think that's a good thing. I got two more things here and I'm trying to remember the first one actually. Uh, oh, one is the Avery Johnson element, and that's more important than anything, right? Mm-hmm. Like let's be honest, he's staying he's happy with the hire. That's awesome. Uh, and in, in addition to that, as long as Avery Johnson is at Kansas State, he's going to make any offensive coordinator probably look pretty good. Like, like I know it still matters. The offensive coordinator is very, it still matters and very important. But Avery Johnson is going to cover up most of the warts that he did have. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. If he has been any. I mean, he's that kind of talent. Uh, two, the Packers thing, you got me going there. Jordan Jordan Love is a uh, play Sunday, I think, is a Sunday win away from sending the Packers to the playoffs in, in his first year. Uh, Green Bay's playoff scenario is just winning their in because they beat Minnesota last weekend, which was a huge win. Aaron Rodgers couldn't take Green Bay to the playoffs last year. Let's just start it out. Yeah. Good point. Good point. So there you go. Uh, just a lot of good things there. DY's team is going to the playoffs, and Matt Wells, just he knows how to coach him up, and everything's uh, honky-dory for the Wildcats now. So, look, I, I think that this is a, this is a, a good thing. This is a nice, quick, uh, swift move of action for Chris Kleiman to kind of get things in line, and now we'll see how everything kind of works out as they progress through the offseason and begin to move forward into uh, the 2024 season and everything else. But uh, K-State completes the staff to this point, and we'll see kind of how Connor Riley and that dynamic goes down with Matt Wells uh, as well. Now, uh, one final thing before we kind of jolt out of here. What what are some of the other things that we need to kind of keep our eye on over the next couple of weeks with K-State football now that uh, obviously high school recruiting is in the books for this season? And really, it's just a couple of portal things left and, and maybe anything else that would, would happen staff-wise. Yeah, I'm gonna. it'll be interesting if there's any other staff moves. Uh, nothing has really uh, risen to the surface. You know, there's you know speculation here and there, but nothing that's bleaking red sign yet. But I don't know if those discussions are yet finished. And the recruiting-wise, like you said, portal stuff, I, I think – especially now that you have your offensive coordinator in place or your co-offensive coordinators in place and a quarterback's coach, then you have these next four or five days to bring in visitors and hopefully solidify the wide receiver position because it's probably still incomplete at this moment. I think, (laughs) excuse me. I think you feel good about what you're going to get from Jace Brown. Um, Everything else is a little uneasy there. I think you still think you're going to get next year basically what you got from Jaden Jackson this year at the very least. I think that'd be okay. Jace Brown's a stud. And then hopefully Keegan Johnson ascends to what you thought he would be this year, having another year in the in the pro <laughs> excuse me, in the program. And then you have the two four star receivers coming in. Are are they early impact guys? Maybe not. Can Trey Spivey and Andre Davis make progress? Um, that'll be a big offseason piece as well. But the wide receiver position still needs addressed. Yep, we'll see how it uh, all plays out for the Wildcats. But 
really a big deal in, in getting all those problems sorted out or, you know, looking for answers is getting the first big answer, and that's completing the coaching staff and uh, filling up the offensive side. So Matt Wells, we knew it would happen at some point. It seemed like a given at some point Chris Kleiman and Matt Wells would work together. Uh, it was quite the winding road. We finally made it here, though. Uh, it's going to happen in 2024. Uh, two guys that were hired in the same coaching cycle in the Big 12 in 2019, and Chris Kleiman basically ended Matt Wells' career at Texas Tech because he got fired after uh, K-State's win in Lubbock in the 2021 oh. season. So, Also in that coaching cycle is Neil Brown, who just saved his job probably yeah. with what West Virginia did this past season, and I believe Les Miles, right? Yeah, and Les Miles was the other one there, so... Uh, things going things going really well for two guys right now. One of them, eh, things starting to go in his direction. And Les Miles might not know where he is right now. I don't know where he is right now. <laughs> and ultimately, that's probably a good thing for college football. So, for Derek Young, I'm Mason Vo. Thanks for watching K-State Online. Good reminder to go check out everywhere you can find KSO to stay locked in with the Wildcats. Head over to on 3 kstateonline.com where you're going to get plenty of info about the about the Matt Wells hiring. You can also stay locked in right here on the YouTube page and then you can follow us all on Twitter as well. So that is the book on Matt Wells and K-State's coaching staff in the current moment. Anytime news breaks with the Wildcats, be sure to get to KSO, check it out on the YouTube and also over at on3 as we'll have extensive coverage there. Also going to have uh, plenty of basketball coverage coming up. Uh, over the next few months now, because basketball season is in full gear, conference play on the way, and uh, lots of good to go down there for K-State. So Derek and I are out of here for this edition of K-State Online.